This is the GMS Magazine podcast. And my friends, this is the last GMS Magazine podcast of 2023. I am Paco Garcia, your host. And this is Chris from DSX Macana. Uh, Fully restored all of his money. Got his all his money back. Got oh, all his accounts. I'm back stable. Congratulations. Uh, Before you tell me about any of that, please uh, let me remind people that this is a podcast all about role-playing games, board games, and the people who make them sometimes, though, the people who play them, but mostly the people. And sometimes are oh, the people who sell them. Uh, yeah, that, that as well, of course. Of course, absolutely, yes. Exactly. That's a very good, very good point, my friend. Very good point. So anyway, you got your money back. Yes, I did. I did. And we are, are I, I used it to, yeah, we got all of our money and then we lost almost all of it, paying all the bills that had been accruing for the last month and a half that we couldn't pay. Well, at, uh, at least you got money to crackers. pay them. Yes, yeah, paying for uh, crackers, paying for Christmas. Uh, so, but uh, but you know we we've been hitting up the conv- uh, we've been hitting up the local fairs, hitting up the local. Uh, last week was the last time for fairs, so we uh, I am officially on Christmas vacation. <clears throat> Although I'm still writing, I have a novel I want to work on, and um, I'm, I'm I'm diving into it pretty aggressively. Delicious. However. Um, to dive straight into things, mm-hmm. things are a lot better in my life than it is for a lot of other people. Uh, Danuth broke only a few hours ago. I'm not okay. sure if you saw that. Uh, Hasbro and oh. was looking specifically has Bulls Magic the Gathering and so forth. They have laid off 1,100 staff as a last resort. I know this news is especially difficult during the holiday season, yeah. but yes, Hasbro uh, to cut 1,100 jobs despite Dungeon Dragons thriving. But wait a Just second, wait a second, down. wait a second, wait a second. I, 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 I haven't read the news uh, fully, but what I've read is that they are laying down people because of the toy section is really going down, even though the uh, web C is going up. Are they laying off people from Wizards of the Coast as well? Well, the word was uh, Hasbro is laying off 1,100 employees, according to SEC filing, the company behind franchises like D&D and Transformers. They already let you off 800 uh, employees in January, while some employees will find out uh, their fate uh, uh, pub- their today. Mm-hmm. Others will be cut coming in the year. By 2025, Hasbro told sh- shareholders the company hopes to save about $350 million um, by cutting employees, because that's how you do things. Is how you do things. That's how you make money. And make money is to do is to is to kill people, kill people's livelihoods. Um, we don't know exactly where uh, the cuts are, but the indication is that it's going to be something um, that's going to be basically the. It's one of those situations where they're going to be snipping at base at, at everything. Well, uh, it, it, but as I mean, as of as of as of this point, you are correct. I don't see any specific um, uh, evidence that says they're cutting from Wizards of the Coast. Because I'll tell you, if they cut eleven hundred people from Wizards of the Coast, there's no Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast doesn't employ that many people. No, no. But but the thing is that they're laying really? off they're laying off what's apparently a thirty percent of their staff. I mean that, yeah, that, a, that it, I it, firstly it's a, it's a I percent. don't understand how can that even be legal. I mean it it is. It's insane that a company can do that and get away with it. Um, but secondly... Well, that's how corporations need to show revenue growth. And this is what we're seeing with Warner Brothers, is that it's kind of stealing stealing Peter to feed Paul, whatever that, that term is. But, so they need to raise they need to raise a revenue. They need to show that they're showing profit. And if you don't show that continued growth and they're not making money, the only way to, is then to cut their budget. The only issue, of course, is what's happening with Warner Brothers is the fact they talk about how much they, how much money that they made or saved in their budget by cutting off all these projects. But as a result of that, they have no projects in the future. Mm. Uh, as a result, you look at it and go, "Oh, this is not a good sign for us." Because, and this is what I was, I was thinking that someone recently about the fact that they've made living so expensive in North America and made um, uh, the wants so inexpensive. But even those are going in price. There is going to be a critical mass when they go, well, we don't know where else to cut because there's nowhere to cut. And then these companies go go under. Hmm. And so it's one of those situations that uh, it, it's just it's just funny. The rich get richer, but there's a point where we're like, well, there's nobody else to fire. How do we, you know, how do we make this keep, keep on going? Yeah. 
Well, I, I really feel for, for the people who have been laid off and, and their families. I think it is absolutely horrible. Uh, I wonder, uh, I suppose we will need to wait and see who is being laid off, as in not uh, person by person, but from what areas of the company. Because if that, uh, what it means is that um, the toy side of it is going down, that could be really bad. I know that they have made some really bad decisions recently where I think it was one of the bosses that suggested that to save money, um, repackage, and, and it was scrapped, that idea, thank God, uh, repackage some of the old games and start producing Jenga in beautifully made uh, pieces made out of plastic instead of wood. Which is like, well, it's like a Jenga has to be wood. Any Jenga made of plastic, it just doesn't feel the same. It just isn't. And um, apparently that was scrapped off. But that is the kind of approach that they were having to save money, which is a bit... I don't think you understand how toys or games work. So we'll have to wait and see. But they better empower what's left of the company to do very well because otherwise I can see Wizards of the Coast taking over Hasbro quite literally. Yeah. So yeah, that's that, that was the news. It just dropped, so I figured I'd mention it. Um, I, I have several websites discussing board games. Obviously, we're now we're talking about the best board games of, of 2023. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I have I have some some articles that were written. Uh, one was written uh, just today, in fact, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wow. Polygon announced the best board games we played in 2023. Uh, Engadget released theirs uh, last week. Uh, uh, and uh, are you interested in seeing what they're saying? Yeah, can see why not. Why wouldn't? Okay, I? so exactly, exactly. So uh, here are the best board games we played according to Polygon, best of the year. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what's the disclaimer that some of these games didn't uh, have been out a lot longer? These are not these, these are not necessarily games released in 2023. So there's a game called Blood on the Clock Tower. Now I remember Shut Up and Sit Down talking about this game at length. Uh, they absolutely adore this game. It's the game I'm thinking of. So that's it's, but it is not a cheap game. Blood on the Clock Tower, Blood on the Clock Tower um, is $145. It's not cheap. Can Canadian or, or uh, US dollars? That I believe is, that is very much US. Blood on the Clock Tower is $145 US. Um, uh, you can buy it from the pen. Yeah, very, very expensive game. Uh, I will not be spending that type of money. No. Uh, it is a storyteller, ba a storytelling based game. Like uh, your group will be d divided into the good, voting for uh, an execution each day, and the evil killings and hindering the good team in the night. Uh, also, is a game called Challengers. On the opposite end, this game is seemingly for younger people, uh, not too young. Play time forty five minutes compared to. Three, 30 minutes to 120 minutes, which means two hours for Blood the Clock Tower Challenges, book at 45. It only costs $25 on Amazon, $40 at Target. So, um, this one, um, let's see here. While discussed being like Werewolf are certainly interesting, challenges can be played by a large group of 8 to 16 people. So this is a party game. Uh, this is a narrative experience. There's another game called Daybreak. That means uh, a bell. That means a bell. Yeah, so Daybreak is a um, cooperative game designed by Matt Leacock, okay. famous pandemic designer and Italian designer Matteo Manapes. It is designed to not only raise climate change awareness, but also cultivate optimism through thought-provoking themes and creative problem-solving that leads to real-world solutions. Uh, that's an interesting game, uh, I have to admit. I think I'd be interested in seeing that one. Okay. Um, uh, Alan R. Moon, the creator of Ticket to Ride, created a game called Dice Miner. Yeah, clearly 11% off, but one to four players. It's uh, You get it for about $31 on Amazon. Uh, so that's a Dice Miner game. Disney's Lorcana. That's a bit of a controversial choice. Mm -hmm. um, well, everybody's raving about it. I don't know what the game is about at all, but uh, everybody seems to be loving it. 
Oh, by the way, all in armor and tech right. He didn't design Dice Miner. He's just mentioning that that was his favorite game of the year. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so the uh, but Charlie Hall, senior editor of Tabletop, talked about Disney Lorcana. They dislike trading cards. They said strong, uh, uh, strongly. I simply have no interest in competing against deep pocketed speculators for tiny scraps of shiny cardboard in a marketplace that is anything but free. But Disney Lorcana has its hooks in deep, my friends, <laughs> and it's not looking good for me and my pocketbook. Uh, I will not be going into Lord Cannon because I have no interest in that. Um, the Doug, Cook, Doug Cockle, actor and voice of Geralt in the Rivia in the Witcher game series, has talked about his favorite game being Escape the Dark Castle. Um, I know about this game due to its black and white monochromatic um, art style. That being said, uh, my, I am certain that this game has been out longer than that. I think this game is at least a year, uh, over a year old, probably two years old. But I do know Escape the Dark Castle. Earthborn Rangers uh, mm -hmm. is another popular game. It's $100, a bit on the pricey side for a, what looks to be just a bunch of cards. Is it a bunch of cards? It is a bunch of cards. Uh, the customizable cooperative card game set in the wilderness of the far future. You take on the role of a ranger, protector of the mountain valley you call home, a vast Wilderness transformed by monumental feats of science and technology devised to save Earth from the destruction from, from destruction long ago. This was a Kickstarter game. Uh, it does look interesting. I mean, I, I can see there's a lot of cards, uh, but whether or not that I don't know. I don't know. Hundred dollars for for a card game always seems a bit iffy for me. Uh, Flamecraft. Uh, which you can, the base version is $39. The Uber, Uber version is a bit more expensive. Uh, I also believe this game did not come out this year. I do believe this game this game came out the year before. I think this is a 2022 game. Uh, it's about $40, but, but I know we spent more. But uh, that is definitely, that's a game I did play. Uh, I liked it a lot. Uh, not a lot of really original mechanics. But my wife really enjoyed it because it's adorable. It has cute little adorable dragons in it. Uh, Forgotten Waters. Uh, this is another game that I'm almost certain did not come out this year. I've played this game once. I thought it was really, really good. It says here retails for 45. Good luck. I've not seen it that cheap. Uh, apparently, you can get it for 45 on Amazon, but in Canada, I've never seen it that cheap. Uh, that is a cooperative story based um, pirate game. It's if you've played uh, Stuffed Fables. Or Mice and Mystics, it's in that exact same vein, except it's obviously pirate themed. It has a fantastic um, app assistant that's uh, where characters, where it's voice supported and people talk in the pirate voice, which is really good. That's cool. Uh, I, as you can imagine, also on this list is Frost Haven. Uh, Frost Haven's been out for a while, but it hit retail uh, this year for probably the first time. It's going for as high as $250. So, yeah, uh, I like Gloomhaven. I am not spending $250 on Frosthaven. And um, Jaws of the Lion, which is again, which is another 2022 game. Uh, Gudetama, the tricky egg card game. I have to admit, I haven't heard of this one. You can buy it for $11. And let's see. Hegemony, lead your class to victory. I think I have heard of Hegemony. Uh, I don't know if that is a... Yeah, I actually did think it came out this year. $95. Uh, John Company, second edition. Tom Brewster, video go goblin. I shut up and down, says this game. No game has dominated my brainscape more than this year's uh, John Company, second edition. Better be for $120. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> let's see here. I'm skipping past the Warhammer 40K kill team, oh. whatever. Land and Freedom, $65. Uh, one to three player semi cooperative game where three factions, communists, anarchists, and moderates must work together in an uneasy alliance against Franco's fascist forces in the Spanish Civil War. How do you not know about this game? I have no idea, but I need that link so I can try and get that game. Anything to kick Franco's troops out of the fucking planet. I need that. I I am I am I am going to share with that with you the link now. Nineteen thirty six, right wing army generals have rebelled against the Spanish Republic, aided by Hitler's Germany and Mussolini's Italy, to save Spain's three factions 
anarchists, communists, and moderates must put aside their differences and forge an anti-fascist alliance. But can you trust your allies when your agendas are directly opposed? It is a card-driven tug-of-war game in which players are immersed in the dilemma of balancing this fragile alliance against their own political revolutionary ideal. You must repel fascist attacks on the four fronts while gaining the initiative through tableau building, deck management, and powerful medallions. I not going to lie. I am interested in seeing what people say about this one. Mm, I will take a look as soon as we finish the podcast and find if I can get it. Uh, bo- I'll get some bonus recommendations. Halls of Hegra, $54. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, it's listed in a similar space by bridging war game and euro game concepts. Okay. My Island, um, that, that game has been out for, oh, no, actually, I, no, My Island, I've heard this game. I actually own this game. Um, no, no, no. I haven't seen My Island. I've played My City. Oh, okay. So so this oh, is Ryan Kenichi's new version. So My Island is the latest version after My City and My City Roll and Build. Uh, the Silver Bayonet, a war game of the uh, Napoleonic Gothic Horror. I don't know what the heck that means. I don't know. That sounds good. Sip. Simply put, it's a Napoleonic skirmish meets hammer horror. You build up a, up a small, diverse war band of eight daring soldiers from a selection of six main warring factions of that era. And uh, Hubble, blah, blah, blah. And it uh, looks like it's, yeah, it's definitely, it's meant to be a horror story. Smug Owls looks like a, like a very inexpensive $20 card game. Stardew Valley, the board game, which has been out for, um, I think that came out in 2022. I have heard Nothing but horrible things about this game. I heard it's very popular. <laughs> I know a lot of people that love it, but I have been told that it is one of the most over overwhelmingly difficult cooperative games to play. Uh, I have heard people talk about the fact that it is too simply too difficult. Okay. What else is on this list? Finally, uh, Horrified. That's been out for a while. Forest Shuffle, thirty dollars. Haven't heard of that. And, of course, people talk about that. If you haven't bought Wingspan, please still do it. Mm. But Wingspan's been out for five years. I think that the, its time has passed. So that was Polygon's uh, list. And as for the best games this season, I'll go really quickly on Engadget. They posted theirs, and they say, a game called Freelancers, which is a story-based app game. game. I'm actually interested in this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a... Kind of a fantasy. It is a D and D style game without uh, a GM. It uses an app. A game called Fiction. I'm actually interested about in this one. King of Tokyo, which has been around for a very long time. Oh, Wavelength, which has been out for a couple of years. Uh, what else we have? Clank Catacombs, Ark Nova. Speaking of, yes. I mentioned that uh, when a local calendar club was selling Ark Nova for ten dollars a pop mm-hmm. last year. Yes, they are. Sell- the, the stores have reopened, and they're selling them for fifty percent off right now, before Christmas. My guess is that they wanted the big game, and they ordered so many copies of Ark Nova, they cannot give them away. So I find this very humorous. But yes, mm-hmm. if you want to get Ark Nova, do not buy it anywhere else. If you're in Canada, go to your local calendar club and get it for about twenty five dollars. Um, Expeditions, which is the new expansion. Um, well, I've heard of Expeditions. So I guess ex- Expeditions, it's part of Scythe, but it doesn't require Scythe. Which I thought, first time I saw Expedi- Expeditions, I thought it was an expansion for Scythe. But apparently, it's a sequel to a popular game, but you don't need to know anything about the latter in order to play it. So I want to find out more about this. But I did not know that um, Expeditions was not part of Scythe, but with a sequel. Interesting. Okay. Um, here's something interesting. So Azul always pops up on these lists, but if you go to uh, some stores, like Winners, they don't have Azul as you recognize it. They have released a unique variation of Azul, but instead of um, uh, the decorative tiles okay, uh, that it's based off of, they are chocolates. Oh, okay. That could be very unhealthy. No, no, no well, <laughs> it's not. I was disappointed when I realized you couldn't eat the oh. the, 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 the game pieces. Okay, but it, yeah, it is exactly the same game. Nothing has been changed mechanically, but the theme has changed from decorative floor tiles to Belgium chocolates. But it is exactly the same game. And have they changed the so name and called it child labor or something? 
<laughs> it is um, the actual name. Let's see here. It is called Azul Chocolatier. Okay. As it, it, like I said, from every single indication has shown that it is exactly the same game. They have simply uh, reskinned it to be uh, based off of chocolates instead of tiles. So it just looks a bit different. Uh, Votes for Women, uh, which is the game about, I do assume, suffrage. And that has, um, uh, I've heard about that one before. Uh, Earth, has, I keep on hearing good things about Earth. I, I think it's been out for a year. I have not tried it. So that was Engadget's list. Obviously, okay. uh, a lot of um, a lot of games that have been out for a while, and a few games you want to talk about. You have you have a homework assignment. I want to take a look at the Expeditions game. Hmm. Uh, my wife and I have to get back into playing some site. But that that's my that's my contribution. That is the Christmas list of recommendations for people. Uh, Okay. So uh, this, yeah. So now I, on to you, sir. I have the recommendations list for RPGs uh, because I, I have actually bought a lot of them from Spiel. But I'm going to give you a choice. Would you like me to go through my review of the board game I've played first or the list of games I bought at Spiel first? Oh, at Spiel, not, oh, your pardon, at Dragon Meat first. I want the review first. Okay. I, I, um, uh, I have at last played... You're going to want to look at the screen for this. Oh my yes. God. I have played at last Gay Sauna. We got together with my friends and um, started playing the game. So let's go into it. Um, production wise, mediocre. Okay, okay. for several reasons. Um, the game comes with an awful lot of cards, it comes with a board, it comes with an awful lot of more cards and some cheats, and then some more cards and some player uh, boards. The uh, game is all about a bunch of people who decide to go for a fun night out to a gay sauna, and the aim of the game is to flirt and eventually uh, go to have some private conversations, wink wink, with as many people as possible. And in order to do that, you need to uh, go into each room of the sauna and flirt with them. Every At the beginning of the game, you choose, and every player is going to choose a character, and each character is going to have a number of characteristics. So you're either going to be a top or a bottom, or versatile. Uh, if you don't know what that means, uh, humans, then Go find it online, because if I explain it, then this video will get censored. So you just and Google it. Uh, and each person is going to also have a uh, three tribes that they are interested in. So where they, whether they are uh, twinks or daddies or bears or uh, otters or guy next door, those are the people that you feel attracted to. And then each character is also going to have three different fetishes. So whether it is punking uh, or showers or FEC sting, you know what I mean? If you're watching at the screen, you would know what I mean. Uh, whatever. And what you're meant to do is uh, at the beginning of the, each round, you take a random card, put it in the middle of the board, and that is the room of the sauna you're in. So say, for example, that you are in the dark room. Uh, then that will come with a number of mini rules as to how to play that particular room. So, for example, in the, in the dark room, you don't know, you can't see who is in there. So you have to approach people to flirt with them in the hope that they will be interested in the same thing that you're interested in. If they are, then you can flirt. If they are not, you can flirt, but because they're not what you're into, you go down one level of horniness. You begin at three. If you get down to zero, then you need to rest. You spend some time by yourself thinking, oh my God, 
let's build up our libido with some sort of, I don't know, gaze, yoga or whatever to feel horned up again and then come back into the game. So you basically miss around. Yeah. Once you find somebody that you could flirt with, then you have to roll a die. And that die is going to define whether you actually flirt with them or not. So the die will say things like, for instance, not two tops can, go, can be together. Or uh, for this uh, flirtation to work, uh, a top and a bottom must exist. Or there cannot be any two there cannot be any any bottoms in this and once you've actually gone through that then you roll another die which is going to tell you how successful you were at having the private conversation in your own cubicle with this person you flirted with and if you are successful then your level of horniness goes up but if you're not like for instance you shoot blanks or uh, you come out dirty then you go down in your level of horniness. Right. Then every character, every player is going to have a toy that is going to help with the flirting. So, for instance, if you have a whip or, or you have a paddle, then that's going to help if uh, you are interested in somebody who is into panking. Then there are some cars that are cars of mischiefs and cars of events. Two different things altogether. And then there are two different ways of playing the game. There's a simple way and there's a slightly more complicated way. Okay? Right. There were no further dancing here. The rules were almost impossible to understand. Oh. Almost impossible. We literally had to go and watch a video which in about 10 minutes explained how the game played without needing the rules at all. Okay. So the rules are just uh, so hard, so goddamn hard to understand. The icons on the cars are so tiny that not even, I'm not joking, not even with a magnifying lens, you could make up for the spanking icon. Because you yeah. literally have one man doing this, another man right. sitting showing their bomb so you can do that to them in about this tiny little big of icon there impossible mm. impossible the graphic design was absolutely appalling the illustrations are hilarious really really funny and the game is very well observed from the point of view of the subculture you know the gay subculture of going to saunas which is yeah. quite a prevalent thing for for gay uh, subculture because it has been for a very long time the only place where we could go and have encounters with other people feeling safe. Um, and then we started to play the game. Uh, it comes with a box, so you can put all your cards and your pieces inside, but if you assemble it and put it inside the box, then you cannot close the lid because it's too big. Oh. It comes with some little shelves that you're meant to assemble, so you can put the cards in it, in those shelves. So you can have the whole thing tight. But the fitting is so loose that the shelves were rocking all the time and we ended up not using them at all. Oh. And when we started to play the game, the basic game, it just goes down to take a card, roll a die, then hopefully roll another die and if that works, great. That's it. It was, I'm sorry to say, painful. Oh. Really painful. The more advanced mode, it basically gives you a tiny little bit of tactics and strategy because you can mess with all the people like you know, stealing their lube or doing some mischief so you can stop them from flirting with somebody. But it is never enough that it makes it interesting. It's just a solitaire multiplier. That That is all it is. And because everything is decided by the two rolls of the die, it doesn't matter what you do. You can be perfectly prepared. You can be perfectly matched. But if you roll badly, that's it. You, you don't get that score. You don't get to score that, that encounter, which I thought was absolutely ridiculous. 
Furthermore, considering that there is meant to be a game, you know, where you mess with each other, there was no way to out-flirt somebody. So there is no player interaction, you know. So it's, let's say that I find, you know, I have a card and this other card is per a perfect match for mine and a perfect match for one of my friends. There is absolutely no way for my friend to say, well, I am going to out-flirt him with buying him a beer or uh, a new toy or something else. There's barely any way to interact with each other. So the whole thing is just falls down by the wayside. It's a pity because there are some interesting ideas in here and I love how the sauna theme has been translated into a game. Uh, and I thought that that is very, very well observed. But otherwise, I, I hate to say this, but I really cannot recommend the game at all. And I was desperate to do it because I really wanted to support a game created by a collect, you know, people from my community. But as it stands, it was a massive, massive disappointment. Really didn't like the game at all. Well, that's too bad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's, but I appreciate your honesty in the matter. Well, it's my duty. You know, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to lie uh, just because this is a gay game and just say, oh, no, because, you know, uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. It's just not a very good experience from the gaming point of view. From the gay point of view, hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. And the number of really ridiculous sounds that we made around the table when we were playing, fine. But if you want to play the game for anything else than kicks, I have another thing. It's a, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's a novelty. Yeah, it's, exactly. That's exactly it. Um, and, and the thing is, I play with another um, three straight people. Hmm. Some of the things they just didn't get. They they just didn't get it. And some of the things, they just looked at the cousin saying, Paco, really? Which, again, for novelty, for kicks, it was fun. But that, that is the end of it. Uh, I don't think um, I, I don't think it's worth the effort and the amount of money that you have to spend to get your hands on it for the experience that it offers. So, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. I really am sorry. Uh, designer, Adrian Collier, and artwork Jose Garrote I'm really sorry but you really need to play test these things a lot more outside the gay community um, and the thing is if they've repackaged this with a different theme like farming or cooking or anything at all like that uh, and they iron out some of the issues it could be an absolutely brilliant game but as it stands no. alright your official year in review yeah um now, last, uh, week before last, I went to Dragon Maid. It's the first time I go to Dragon Maid since 2019. Being a very long time. Dragon Maid is a premier RPG London convention that happens every year. Uh, it's a relatively small show with an attendance of about 3,000 people, give or take. So it's not huge. But pretty much anybody who is anybody goes there. Um this year they had as uh, guests, special guests, as well as Ken Hyde and Robin Laws, who come every single year. They they are there all the time. They're adorable. But this year they also had Matt Forbeck and uh, Luke Gygax. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yes. I think I saw that on his profile. Yes. And uh, Matt Forbeck is a gem. Seriously, what a treasure of a man he is. He is charming. He's adorable. He's charismatic. He keeps telling stories. He is so happy to talk to people. He was signing books all the time. We had dinner at some point, dinner a beer, uh, because we had already had, he had already had dinner. And he was amazing. Absolutely amazing. What an absolute pleasure and joy to meet him. And then I also met Luke. Uh, we had dinner together with some other people, my friend Jonathan Green and uh, Jeff Richards, creative uh, director of uh, Chaosium. Uh, and, and Luke, we, we were just sharing stories, uh, which I have promised I'm not going to repeat in public uh, because they are quite like, oh, um, okay. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> they were amazing and Luke is 
just as nice as you would hope uh, him to be. He he's he's brilliant. He really is very gentle, very honest, very charming, very candid. Uh, and we had an absolutely great time with him, and I was truly impressed by his absolutely unquenchable thirst for beer. <laughs> he, he loves his beer. Uh, and, and we had an absolutely great, great time. He's, he's brilliant. So uh, this year, though, I, I decided to spend my time uh, trying to take a look at indie little games. Yeah. So I went through them. Firstly, I have to say thank you to people from Free League who've been very kind to send me a The Walking Dead universe, the core rule book, which is great. They've sent me this for review. And The Walking Dead, you know, the stars are set. This has nothing to do with Dragon Meat, but it's on top of my pile. I just want to show everybody so they can look forward to this because I am going to review the shit out of this thing because I'm looking forward to trying it. But I decided to go a Dragon Meat for tiny little games, indie games. The first game that I was interested as in, really interested in, is this game called Horse Girl. I had no idea what it's all about. I read it on the way back on the plane, but it described it is described as um, Horse Girl is a body horror solo journaling RPG where you undergo a surgical and mental transformation into a horse by the love of your life. By the what? Love of your life. Okay. And it comes with this uh, deck of cards. Um, interesting. I am going to do a more in-depth review of this game at the beginning of the year, but this is brutal. This is not a game for everyone, and it is literally... I can imagine. Yeah, this is literally a game about being in such a ridiculously toxic relationship that that person that you're in love with decides to change you body and mental, mentally into what he wants you to be, regardless of what you want to do with your life. So this is not a game for people who, or maybe it is, I don't know, for people who have uh, been in very, very toxic, abusive relationships. Uh, word of, big, big word of warning for this game. Then I also saw my friends, uh, you know, Phil and Paul Voldowski from The Cthulhu Hack, which do you know that I backed The Cthulhu Hack 2? Everybody else has it, and I haven't. Mm. Do you know why? Because I am an absolute muppet and completely forgotten to log in onto their website and finish the pledge manager. Oh, That's me. So they gave me this, yeah. uh, which is a box with a setting and an adventure uh, for Australia, which I read a little chunk and I loved it. Then I also bought Still in the Throne, uh, which is a Still in the Throne is a tabletop role playing game of epic mecha heist action. In just a few hours, you'll build a titanic mech with a thousand years of drama-filled history, devise the elaborate security system that protects it, and then play to find out how your crew of thieves <clears throat> take those defenses apart and escape with their prize. <coughs> oh, pardon me. <coughs> I bought that. I bought The Fall of Home by Joe Winter. Oh, oh, the of Home. Yes. Uh, give me one second. I need to. I need to cough. Yay. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> sorry about that. Uh, I have a bad throat, as you can hear. So anyway, I know nothing about this game. I can't remember. I only know that I think I know Joe Winter's name. I think I've seen their name somewhere, and I thought, okay, if I seen the name i think i need to find out also that cover is gorgeous really yeah, beautiful so i had to buy it then i bought the wretched also because oh. it looks gorgeous yeah really really cool uh, i don't know what's all about <clears throat> and signal to noise which again is a gorgeous cover and i don't know why i bought this um but the signal arrived through blah 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 uh, and inside looks really cute so i bought that 
and Scribe. I bought oh. Scribe, which is a solo journaling game of the Bronze Age Collapse. And it's all to do with the cuneiform language, uh, writing style. So, Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Diamond Scalabic and blah, blah. So anyway, I bought that too, because I could. Then I bought this, which is called Project Cassandra. And this I am interested in, because um, in this game, the players play psychics <clears throat> from the Cold War. And what's meant to happen is that you know what is going to happen in the adventure. So you know that some people are going to blow the Eiffel Tower. You know that that is going to happen. So you have to stop it. And the way that you do that is to find out how it's going to happen. That you don't know. So you need to figure out how uh, whoever it is is going to do it so you can try and avert it. Mm. Which I thought, that's a very cool premise. Yeah. Then Luke gave me this. Okorim? Okorim. Okorim. Wall of Okorim. I think he's going to uh, kickstart it soon. And he also was very kind to uh, to sign it for me. Uh, well, for, actually, for everyone around the table, you know, and I'm prompted, he said, oh, here you are. Do you play uh, Do you play 5e? Yes, here, this is for you. Do you play old edition AD&D? Yes, well, this is for you. And he had uh, some of these in each and every version of D&D &D for everyone wow. to, to give away, uh, which I thought was very cool. And then, and then, after literally months and months and months and months and months of waiting for this to appear in Amazon so I could buy it, because I cannot for the life of me find it in Spain, I found Colostal. Wonderful art style. It's beautiful and the game looks and feels fantastic this is a solo journaling game and what happens is that you are the character and colostal is a castle the size of a planet so within their rooms are continents and countries and mountain ranges and everything you can think of and with colostal they also had the expansion called the Rune Lands. Neat. And they had Kyodania, which is like a, an Asian themed expansion as well, which also looks super cool and super delightful. Yeah. And they had the diary. So you can document your adventures in a properly official way and they had the deck of cards as well so i just literally said give me everything give me money yep give yep. me absolutely everything so that is what i got from dragon maid now i have left colostal for the end because i also have a cautionary tale that I've been oh. telling in Facebook for a bit now. Uh, I've gone to TikTok as well, and I've spoken about this in TikTok and on the YouTube channel, but he bears mentioning again. When I was talking to, to the authors of, of Colostal, they asked me where I'm from, because, you know, accent. <clears throat> I'm going to say, to, you know, I've been waiting for this for Spain and blah, blah, blah. I said, well, if you wait, you could. Um, <coughs> oh my throat <coughs> you could buy it in Spanish because it's been licensed nice. like, oh okay That's. I am still want to buy it because I don't trust translations so why would I want to wait any longer who is the publisher and they said so and so I was like oh shit why well, it so happens that the publisher earlier, not a few months ago, about the summertime, give or take, they were outed for really abusing their staff. As in, oh. for instance, they were paying the translators uh, uh, one cent a word, one cent of an euro a word, oh. where the norm is five. Right. 
also they were paying the community manager who was doing all the you know tweeting and so on and so forth <clears throat> with books okay <clears throat> and these are not people who were like producing these things these are people who every time they've gone to a crowdfunding campaign to release things like uh, rats on the wall or the games that they have which are quite a few they've got 20 30 thousand euros for spanish uh, purposes to get 30 thousand euros in an rpg um, crowdfunding campaign is huge mm. really huge so they couldn't possibly be sh short of pop yeah. <clears throat> and yet they decided to do that so of course rightfully this time people went for them and that company was very much cancelled regardless they still had enough fandom from the games to actually be interested in the company but the owner came out with a statement you know this is been thinking about what i want the company to do and i think it's time to bring it back to its roots so for now on, <clears throat> firstly, I'm just going to publish the games I like because I like them. Uh, I'm going to publish this game, publish those games because those are games for true gamers and for people who really like role-playing games and understand what role-playing games are all about. And I am going to release only a very limited number of copies, one print run, and that's going to be the end and no one else is ever going to see them again. So he might as well have tattooed on his forehead, I am a wanker. <laughs> because basically that is what he told the planet. Right. He's a big, massive, <clears throat> up his own ass wanker who thinks he knows what role-playing games are all about. So I explained all of this to these people. And they said, you know, when did it happen? I said, well, this months ago. And they said, well, <clears throat> um, that is about the time when we stopped hearing from this man. We haven't oh. heard from them again. And they said, oh, shit. Do you have a publishing deadline in your contract? And they said, no. I said, oh, dear. So we have an expiration date from the contract. I said, yeah, but how many years is that? Five. So potentially for five years, Coastal could be completely locked in license in Spain, unpublished and unable to be published by anybody else. In Spanish specifically. In Spanish. Correct. Yeah. So um, I said to these guys, you know, I think you need to uh, start communication with this guy and figure out what's going to happen with these things because if he's not going to publish it, every little piece of work that he's done should belong to you, including the translation, if there is any at all. Yeah. And he said, well, I think we're better because otherwise, by the time the contract ends, Colostal may not exist anymore. Maybe nobody will be interested. Also, mm. did he tell you that the print run is going to be really reduced and your revenue will be seriously affected no yeah yeah did you get an advance dudes seriously for the love of god oh, never yeah. <laughs> ever do that ever always when you're going to publish when you're going to license your game police always get an advance always sign a that publishing deadline and always 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 make sure that every bit of work that's been done goes to you translation the layout the whatever if the book is not published or at the end of the contract because why on earth would you not profit after you have given them 
for a period of time for them to publish your book out of their work if they are not going to fulfill the contract. But okay. for the level four that's wholly put everything in written in a contract and get some references from the companies that you are going to license your booking because otherwise you could get shafted very easily and you don't deserve that. There was going to be an Italian translation of Ultramodern, and uh, we, we were going to sign the, sign the contract, but it was entirely dependent on, on, on an advance. And they never sent the advance, so we canceled that contract. We never heard from them, but we had, a, we had been approached for doing that. It was just like, you know, guys, see, we committed, like, but, but ultimately we can't pursue them legally, but uh, if we were to find out that... Um, they had published it, then you know, obviously we seek legal action. But uh, uh, to my knowledge, they just they completely folded before they had the chance to work on this. So yeah. Well, it, it I I was really uh, heartbroken when when I heard these people telling me about you know who they come with. I mean, to be perfectly honest, going going into publishing with any Spanish company can have its uh, downfalls. Uh, and I have mm. been very vocal in Facebook recently about um, Spanish companies and who to trust and who not. To trust because the market yeah. here is just absolutely bonkers really really bonkers so um please i'm begging you let me know before you sign a single piece of paper with anyone uh right now because at the moment i think there are only two companies that i would trust right so that that's it that, that is my um dragon meat uh, experience. Well, there you go. Well, yeah, then that's it. Yes, uh, we should um, say goodbye, perhaps, because um, yeah, this is yes, as, as you mentioned, this is the last podcast of the year. Last uh, podcast of the year of 2023. Uh, we're going to come back in 2024. We're going to start recording in the first week of the year, uh, maybe with some changes. Who knows? we will see and find out because I have some plans and I have some conversations that I want to have with some people. <clears throat> and maybe even the theme of the podcast is going to change somewhat uh, to make it a little bit more niche. Um, even though, yeah. You know, I don't think we're ever going to leave uh, reviews and, you know, talking about whatever is happening. But... Mm. There are some topics of conversations that um, we may want to explore. And also by next year, by when we come back, I may also have a big, big announcement to make about a project that I've been working on over the last few months. Nice. But Can't wait to hear. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, humans, I uh, sincerely hope that you have the best uh you know, festive season, whatever it is you happen to celebrate, hopefully you can celebrate it in peace and happiness with everyone you love around you. And uh, the 2024 is the best possible 2024 it could possibly be until the next 2024. Well, considering my year, uh, 2024 damn well better be better. We can't, I can't afford another. A down year like 2023 2023 was uh, definitely a low one for me so let's hope let's hope 2024 is better well I, I cannot have many complaints about 2023 other than a few work issues so if 2024 is the same for me I would be quite happy I just want well, my life the way it's been this year it's been good so absolutely well let's hope for the best uh, anyway this has been Chris, you can find me on DSX Mac and on all social media channels now. And I am Paco, and you can find me as well on all social media, uh, including TikTok, uh, which, by the way, I always say that I'm going to put the links, and then I always forget, I'm tired, I'm an idiot, I will do that today. And, um, well, G uh, GMS Magazine on Twitter, uh, Paco GMS Magazine on the Blue Sky app, and on Facebook, I am at GMS Magazine as well. Awesome, awesome. Humans. Have a great, great time. And thank you very much for being there. It is uh, genuinely appreciated. And say hi, podcast at gmsmagazine.com before I forget. Talk to you guys very Merry soon. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs>